Fight Club has been around since the dawn of time. Animals battle throughout their lives, whether for food, territory or mates. But when the original Fight Club goes to war, they are fighting for survival. Want season tickets for ringside seats at the original Fight Club? Be prepared for a 12-month deal. In nature, the battles never end. There are many reasons for animals to fight, and each have their own weapons and rules of combat. Some animals seem born for the arena. Bears are bad-tempered and blessed with prize-fighter muscles. In sloth bear society, there are no set rules. Boys fight boys. Girls fight boys. Girls fight girls. Across the bear family, when two males go head to head, it's a clash of the titans. Brown bears have jaws that could crush a bowling ball. But most fighting is done with their paws. The arms and shoulders of bears are strong for digging. They can pack quite a punch. Animals rarely fight without good reason, usually to defend a patch, secure a meal, or to attract a mate. With so many reasons for warfare, life can be a never-ending battle. Spring, a time of cute baby animals, flowers and pretty butterflies. Right? Wrong. With the end of winter comes a brief period of plenty. Spring rain and longer sunlight hours result in an explosion of plant life. There is food for everyone, the perfect time to raise a family. But this utopia can't last. Every animal has a fight on its hands to claim its share of the booty. Some combatants are unlikely. The first rule of Fight Club, don't underestimate your opponent. The humble bumblebee may not seem like Fight Club material, but when there is such a profusion of pollen to eat, this female must find a nest. Prefab tunnels are ideal. But this one is still under occupation. The feisty bee is ready with an eviction order. Maybe the mouse knows there is a potential sting in the tail. The threat is enough. Time for the mouse to move house. The neighbors were a bit prickly anyway. Overcrowding is a big problem when everyone breeds at once, and on clifftops with few narrow ledges on offer, its squabbles are plenty. Here it's not so much pecking order as personal space. 
A variety of seabirds all nest together, backed up against a wall. When it's so hard to keep a footing, it's not surprising tempers fray. The northern gannet is one bird that likes a party, at least at first glance. Tens of thousands will crowd together to breed. The nesting sites are spaced roughly a bill's length apart. It takes a while to establish property boundaries. But the biggest scraps are over nesting material, something in very short supply. In Gannet society, thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's seaweed. Guillemots hardly build nests at all. There really isn't room on their sky-rise cliffs. This might look like another fight, a round of fencing, but this is the next stage of family planning, male and female bill tapping in courtship. And if all goes well, they'll soon have an ugly duckling of their own. But that doesn't mean the fight club can take a break. All seabirds work tirelessly to bring home fish for their young families. When humans arrive for a spot of bird watching, Turns are outraged. The fight club takes to the skies for an aerial attack. No potential threats too big to get the point. Then there are the neighbors to deal with. A guillemot returns to feed the kids. It turns into a fishy free-for-all. A puffin with a bill full of sand eels has to fight another avian thief. Gulls are just after free food, but they have larger cousins intent on flesh. A great skewer, or bongsi. A guillemot chick would make a tasty mouthful. Right from hatching, the featherweights must fight or fail. The next rule, things are not always as they seem. March, the season of madness. Well, it is in the world of the brown hair. The term Mad March Hare comes from this bizarre behavior. 
They dart about, winding each other up, then begin a round of boxing. It used to be thought males fought over females, but in fact, females box males, telling them that they are not yet ready to mate. Females are only receptive for a few hours every six weeks, so when the time comes, the boys go mad. When she is ready, the female hare, or Jill, will lead her chosen Jack a merry dance, making sure he's up to the job of giving her healthy babies. It's quite a test. Hares can reach 75 kilometers per hour. If he cuts the mustard, he'll get to mate. From hare to the tortoise, not quite the same level of speed, but these boys also go crazy for females at this time of year. Don't trust the innocent, flower-munching exterior. This tortoise is a bad boy. And his girlfriend, Shelley, likes it rough. Like a carapaced car chase, he's in hot pursuit. But Tortoise Girls aren't easy. He's going to have to batter her into submission. He tries to mount her. But this female has a trick up her sleeve. Landing an opponent on its back is the perfect way to floor a tortoise. In fact, if the male can't right himself, he could be out for the count. But it's not easy to dissuade a horny tortoise. He's soon back, knocking at her door. It sounds like it was worth the fight. Birds also battle to secure the finest mates. And some have turned fighting into an art form. This is a staging post, or lek for the black grouse. The drab females take their positions, while gaudy males strut into the arena. Tail feathers fanned, red eyebrows engorged with blood. Their serenade echoes through inflated throats, attracting mates and intimidating rivals. If showing off's not enough, to select a winner, they have no choice but to go head to head. May the best grouse win. These birds play dirty, bouncing back and forth, weapons drawn and ready to strike. Like ninjas, they hop, lashing out with sharp claws and powerful beaks, aiming at the sensitive wattles above their eyes.
hens clear the deck. The winner claiming his prize. For this fighter, it's all over. Fights aren't just over females, but facilities as well. Male crickets defend their burrows from intruders, rubbing their wing cases together for an extraordinary soundtrack. The trick is to attract the desired attention of a female and not a rival male set on home repossession. In most sports, they say, keep your eye on the ball, but in nature's fight club, you need to keep your eyes everywhere. Distractions can be deadly. The powerful crickets are so engrossed in beating each other up, they haven't noticed a spectator. In Fight Club, it's not just the match you might lose. Once you've got a home, you still need to try and keep it to yourself. Hamsters are solitary and territorial, even in the breeding season. This hamster needs to keep her burrow to herself. She owns this plot but it seems someone else is carrying out construction work without planning permission. The male seems to think it's all right for him to move straight in. The hamster homewrecker eventually gets the message. She is not in the mood. But he's persistent. It seems the only way to get rid of him is to give him what he wants. Turns out he's the love em and leave em type anyway. Some animals have fixed home ranges, but for others, scraps can start anywhere. Wildebeest have to compete in the fight club whilst on the move. They're breeding in July coincides with their infamous one and a half thousand kilometer migration. On their mobile staging grounds, the bulls must try to hold a patch, hoping the gals will wander in and allow mating, but they must keep other males at bay. A few of the toughest bulls will hold favorable territories in the center of the herd. Only those champs will get to mate. It might be summer, but that doesn't mean it's hot for our next hot-headed champs. Four hundred kilos of short-tempered musk ox, ice age survivors that thrive in the Arctic. But even in the bleakest conditions, it doesn't take much to get their blood to boil.
Again, it's sex on the brain. The rival males begin by sizing each other up, nudging noggins, testing the opponent's nerve. Muskox have built-in crash helmets. Seven centimeters of bone encase the brain, cushioned by a horny mass known as the boss. Dense, matted hair, 10 centimeters thick, a natural shock absorber. The impact has the force of a car ramming a brick wall at 27 kilometers an hour. The blow can be heard from over a mile away. The loser is driven off, leaving the champ to nurse his headache. It can get hot under all that wool. Time to take a dip. But summer is not always a good time to go bathing, especially in East Africa. Wildebeest, hot and tired from their migration, are desperate to drink. They are entering an ancient arena where the fight is for life. Between bites, it's crocodile mating season. It's all about size. The four to five meter males take on favored stretches of river, driving lesser males from their patch. If youngsters get cocky, they will pay the price. No one wants 400 kilos of angry croc bearing down on them. The winner takes all, including the females in this stretch of river. He'll vibrate his body, creating a crocodile jacuzzi, blowing bubbles to get them in the mood. Fights are not always between animals of the same species or for the same stakes. Even crocodiles and their cousins must watch their backs. In the rainforests of South America, a jaguar searches for prey. Pound for pound, the strongest of big cats, he's not too worried about having to fight for his food. He's invited a rather snappy guest to dinner. Cayman can reach two meters, but the Jaguar is ready to take them on. Now it's truly a fight to the death. With around 1,000 kilos of force per tooth, the Cayman can kill large prey and certainly defend itself. If it can get its jaws on the jack, the tables will turn. Using brute force, the cat tries to damage its spine. He holds the reptile underwater to drown it, or at least weaken its fight.
Finally, the Dragon Slayer has his meal. Battles can be about more than just food. They can be defending the family's honor. Meerkats are pugnacious members of the mongoose family, often bickering with each other to maintain a well-organized society. But homeland security triggers an uproar. Boundary lines must be upheld. Homeland secured. Another creature patrols its range. For six years, this stag beetle lived as a giant maggot, munching its way through rotting wood. But this summer, he's emerged as an adult beetle, designed for one purpose, to fight. Over seven centimeters long, bigger than a matchbox, he's drawn to the same sugary sap as a swarm of bees. Another male hones in on the scent. A female's got there first, a potential mate, something worth fighting for. Like sumo wrestlers, the aim is to throw the opponent off balance, to literally get them out of the picture. But victory is short-lived. The determined challenger limps back. Stags only live as beetles for a few short summer months. They don't have long to breed, raising the stakes. Claims the title as champ, but another suitor is waiting in the wings. He too has met his match. In the fight club, sometimes it's better to admit defeat. All animals must respond to the seasons. Summer's heat can leave crayfish high and dry. To avoid becoming boiled lobster, they must find a burrow where they can hole up and escape the drought. Such holes are in short supply. With limited properties available, the would-be tenants turn nasty. They arm wrestle for the deeds.
landlords barricade their homes against eviction. Defending your home and family are common stakes in Fight Club. As they move around, female sloth bears find caves to rest with the cubs. But with no door on this safe house, you never know who's going to drop by. A male bear approaches the cave, perhaps following the female's scent. Males will kill cubs to breed with their mothers. He's a real threat, but this mum's got a fight. Some don't know when to stop. She drives home the message. Peace and quiet at last. All too soon the summer's over and colour drains from the leaves. While the sloth bear defends her youngster, autumn brings childhood to an end for this wildcat family. Mother has caught a rat. She's been nurturing her kittens for five months, but not anymore. It's time for them to fly the nest. Good family fight can end feuds. Time to move on. While some use teeth and claws, there are others with special tools of the trade. Autumn is the season of the horn, headgear designed for combat. Some seem built for arm wrestling. Others are like banging your head against a brick wall. This horned hostility is all about sex. The bigger the headgear, the more attractive its owner, especially if he knows how to use it. Just keep coming back for more. Sometimes it seems like those horns are screwed on too tight. October sees the stage set for one of nature's wildest fight clubs. But before this red deer stag plays for the title, he must prepare himself. 
To win a female's favor, he must prove his heart. First, an alluring scent to attract the girls. Mud, drenched in urine. Stinking of hormones, he's ready to enter the arena. The guttural roars are everything in deer combat, so much more than just a threat. The depth and duration of the bellow warns rivals of the challenger's size and strength. A big voice equals a large, muscular chest. The ladies will keep a close eye on their suitors. They want to make sure their next calves have the best genes. So males that perform well in the fight club will be the best dads. They try to herd the hinds into harems. Small groups are easier to watch over during the mating season. The females lead him on, checking he's at the top of his game. But then a rival enters the scene. They size each other up. If one is smaller or weaker, it's likely to back down. But these stacks are evenly matched. Like jigsaw pieces, the antlers lock together. Fights might last for hours. All around the battling stags, younger males watch. Too small to compete, they may break fight club rules. The huge males can't decide on a winner, but they are so absorbed in each other, they don't notice a younger male making moves on their girls. This cheeky rascal rounds up as many ladies as he can, while the bigger boys are busy. He shows that it's not just muscle that can impress the females. Using your brains can win them over too. The larger males are starting to tire. Finally, the challenger can't take any more. Reluctantly, he backs down. Knowing when to admit defeat is key to survival in the fight club. With deadly antlers, the stakes can be high. This way, he can live to fight another day. While deer are getting ready for winter, it's a chilly summer's day in the South American Andes. The perfect time for guanacos to breed. Lacking the antlers of deer, these wild llamas kick, nip, bite, or even spit at their opponents. To protect his soft underbelly from more nipping, the loser sits down, throwing in the towel Llama style. It's not just males that fight. In the cold northern winter, when moose find food in short supply, it's ladies' night at the fight club.
Now that's girl power. A grey seal bull snoozes on the coast. He's come ashore to greet females arriving on breeding beaches to have their pups. But pupping's not on the male's mind. He dreams of blubbery passion. Sex on the beach. Grey seals in love. Aiming to produce the perfect pup. But to find a suitable father, a tournament is required. A 300 kilo challenger appears from the sea. Heavyweights entering the sumo division. With the powerful jaws and big teeth of a predator, they slash at each other's necks. Bloody battle moves on to the sand pit. It's time to decide on a champion. Eventually, blooded and exhausted, one of the giants concedes. Two months after she mated, the female crocodile buried a clutch of eggs on the river bank. It will take another three months before they hatch. Unlike most reptiles, mother crocodiles stand guard of their nest. You might think the monster would be intimidating enough, but throughout the brooding period, thieves loom large. Baboons and monitor lizards patrol, hoping to steal some of the dragon's treasure. But if they are spotted, they may end up with a fight on their hands. Try as she might, she can't be everywhere at once. It's enough to run a mother ragged. The lightweight lizards are lucky. They can outpace the 10 km per hour croc. There are some even bigger neighbors who cramp the croc style. 
She can't risk one of the two-ton monsters crushing her eggs. Hippos have been known to bite crocodiles in two. They are often considered Africa's most dangerous creatures with 40 centimeter long teeth and a bite force of 300 kilos per centimeter. But hell has no fury like a mother scorned. Peace returns to the riverbank. The months pass and eventually the eggs are ready to hatch. But a fresh problem presents itself to the mother. Another crocodile. Maybe this female can't breed, or perhaps she's lost her entire litter to monitors and other predators. Whatever the reason, she wants the kids. The intruder starts to gather the newborns and carries them gently to the water. Their mother's not too comfy about sharing the kids. It takes a while for the females to sort out their differences, but remarkably, they reach a conclusion. A dramatic end to the Fight Club year. Young crocodiles ready to start their training for the arena. And guarded by not one, but two mothers. The two warriors have drawn a truce, maybe the greatest rule of fight club. Work together for survival. For all creatures, no matter how great or small, life is a struggle. But they endure, perhaps because there is a fighter in us all. <laughs>